Welcome back. Our first video was a summary of the main aspects of Elite Dangerous, which is linked below. Maybe you thought, oh sweet, this is the game for me, and you got it. Awesome. Then you hit the play button and realize, oh my god, what do I even do in this? Where do I start? How do I get more ships? Why is everyone telling me to go to Hutton? With this video, I intend to get you from the play button on the launcher to feeling confident out there in the black by yourself, and maybe even have some goals to work towards. Before we get into that, however, two words. Training missions. Do them. I promise they're worth it. I suggest for now only the first three, which are currently titled as Basic Flight, Docking and Travel, and Combat. Go through these once, twice, or even three times until you feel comfortable. Today, I'll be getting you from your first ship, the Sidewinder, to any ship in the game you'd like. Here is where I'd like to insert a huge asterisk. Don't go for the biggest ship you can. Enjoy the small and medium ships first. Try them all out. We'll have more on that soon and why you'd want to work towards different ships. Right now, we'll be covering combat, exploration, and mining so you can get the cash you need. Before we start, I wanted to give you a quick rundown of the modes you see here. Open, Private, Solo, CQC or Arena, and Training. Open play allows you to encounter NPCs as well as other players on the platform that you play on. Anyone can be friend or foe depending on how they're feeling. Private group allows you to encounter NPCs and only the people you allow to play with you. Solo is NPCs only with no other players. CQC is a lot of fun but can be difficult to find matches. No matter where you are in the galaxy though, you can join in team deathmatch, deathmatch, or capture the flag in arena combat that won't affect your balance. After choosing your commander name, you'll be presented with two options, the Horizon Sidewinder and the new Commander Sidewinder. The Horizon Sidewinder will have two less cargo, which honestly doesn't really matter right now. It'll also have an SRV which allows you to drive a little dune buggy on landable planets. I'm going to go with the new Commander Sidewinder since I'll have a little more jump range without the SRV. Choose whatever name you'd like for your ship. You can change this at any point while docked at a station that has delivery. This name will guarantee I don't get shot in open. If you're worried about other players killing you instantly or want a little bit more help, you might want to start in Drami which places you in a permit-controlled area that other non-beginner players can't access. Now LHS-3447 is outside of this bubble and is open to anyone. Again, whether or not you see other players is dependent on whether you're in open, private group, or solo. From here, it's going to start you in solo automatically. I'm going to start in LHS-3447 for this video so that we can get going quickly. BAM! New Sidewinder! Now today I'm going to be taking you from this point to getting as much cash as you want, but remember to really enjoy the game. Take it all in, land at different stations, take missions, try combat, trade, exploration. Honestly, this game is what you make it. Now you'll notice that we have a new message. The mission it offers will give us 10,000 credits, but for what we're doing today, I really don't need it. What we're going to do is get right into combat so that we can get enough credits to outfit our ship for exploration. Our target amount is about 515,000 credits. You can get this in about 5 to 15 kills. Now the closest area to us with a high resource extraction site that will get us that amount is LTT18486. So we're going to go into our galaxy map, search it, route to it, and jump there. Once here, we're going to need to set our fire group so that we'll be able to use our discovery scanner and other tools later. We'll go ahead and scan the system, then use our FSS to find the bodies with the surrounding resource extraction sites. If this is your first time using the FSS, a tutorial should show up. I suggest looking through it so you can better understand how it works and why you'd use it. Now that we have the area scanned, we can head towards the closest resource extraction site high. In this area, we'll find many wanted ships and the local security service. What we're going to do is continually scan all of the ships in the area. While we're doing this, we want to look out for laser fire and head towards it. Careful not to confuse this with mining lasers. As we get close, we'll target the main ship being shot by everyone else. Once it says wanted in the bottom left, we'll wait for his shields to drop and his hull to come down to about 30 to 40%. Once this happens, fire away until he's gone. The cops will be there to protect you and gain aggro. Each time you destroy a wanted ship, you'll gain a bounty voucher which you can hand in for credits. Now that we've collected our bounty vouchers, We'll go to the nearest station and hand them in. The next step is to outfit our Sidewinder for exploration. The closest system and station that has everything we need at this point is in the Chamunda system at Kitsenko Ring. 
Our main goal here is to decrease our optimal mass so that we can get a higher jump range to go further. Starting with our core internals, we're going to choose the D-rated versions of what we have. D-rated items will have the lowest weight in each of the size classes. The only part we want to A-rate will be our FSD so we can maximize our jump range. Next, we'll go to our optional internals to add a detailed surface scanner that will allow us to map planets and gain a lot of credits quickly. We'll also add the largest fuel scoop to get free fuel from the following star classes, K, G, B, F, O, A, and M. You can set a filter for this in your galaxy map. Make sure, however, that you have enough money for rebuy. Never fly without rebuy. It allows you to get your ship back with these purchased parts. Now we're ready for what's called the Road to Riches. This Road to Riches from Spanch is a listing of high value bodies for you to scan and map using your detailed surface scanner. The link to what you see here is in the description below. With this in mind, our target is a little more than 50 million credits to purchase and outfit an ASP Explorer for mining. This list will have you scanning 22 bodies in 19 systems. If this starts to feel a little bit too much like a grind, try combat again or running some data courier missions to break it up. Here's how to go about scanning and mapping bodies. Now I've just jumped into the first system on this list. I want to make sure I'm fully fueled up first by skimming the star. I don't want to let the heat go too high. Once over 100% heat, your modules will start to take damage. As I'm doing this, I'm going to hunk the system to find the orbital plane and find out how many bodies there are. Once I do this, I like to fly perpendicularly to the orbital plane and about 25 light seconds from the main star. Now I'll pull up my FSS and scan all the bodies in the system. Once I'm done, I'll target the body shown for this system, 1, and fly out to it. I generally will aim for the second to last line emitted from the body, which puts you close enough to map. We'll switch into our DSS and fire probes at the center, top, back, bottom, left, and right. Using less probes than the target amount shown on the right here, will give us a slight bonus when turning in the data. Once this list is complete, I'll dock at Ray Gateway in Diagwandry and turn in the data via the Universal Card Graphics. Now we've finally got enough to go mining. The great thing about Ray Gateway is the discounts and the amount of stuff it has. Without doing anything, you can get 15% off modules because of the power play figure Lee Young Rui, which we'll get into later. This will also help keep your rebuy down. The build we're about to do is linked below, so don't worry if I go too quickly. We'll go ahead and purchase the Asp Explorer. Next, we want to outfit D-rated core internals, except for the FSD and power plant. For the optional internals, we'll need two cargo racks, a biweave shield generator, fuel scoop, collector limpet controller, refinery, prospector limpet controller, and detailed surface scanner. The only hard points we need are a bunch of mining lasers. The other mining tools aren't really needed here since all we're going for is just what's on the outside. Using ED tools, link below, we can find the best place to mine for painite. Currently the fastest way to get cash is by using double painite hotspots, which are hotspots that overlap creating a higher frequency of finding painite. As you can see, this tool shows us that the shortest trip is from Diagwandry to Hades Sector DBX D1112 to mine there then to Thraskis to sell for a total of 216 light years traveled. Once we arrive at the second body, we're going to fire the DSS probes at the ring to show the hotspots. Once they show, we'll fly to the center of the overlap. Since these distances are so large in comparison, I like to target one of the hotspots and use that as a reference point while flying towards it. Because of the overlap, a large majority of these rocks have painite. Fire a prospector limpet out the closest one. Once it shows painite in the list, fire your mining lasers and as many collector limpets as you can. If your refinery picks up anything else besides painite, eject it and add it to your ignore list. Keep doing this until your inventory is full. Do not target anything else while firing collector limpets, otherwise they'll pick up what you targeted and destroy themselves. Not targeting anything will allow them to pick up everything. Now that your inventory is full, head to Petite Ring in Thraskius as stated by the tool and sell your painite. Depending on how much cash you want, continue this process till bored or you have what you like. Hopefully this helps cover a few more aspects of the game. 
It should get you the cash you need to buy the ships and modules you want. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it's very important to try out some smaller and medium ships. A lot of them are very fun to fly and honestly will surprise you. The grind in this game can be very real, but throughout this series, I'll show you how to make the best of it so you can enjoy it as much as I have. As usual, my DMs are open, so hit me up with any questions, and feel free to comment below with what you found helped early on. Thanks for watching.